Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial about Max 8. I am Massimiliano Cerioni and I will guide you through these lessons. We will be studying the gen package inside the Max environment, which is a low-level programming environment that allows us to write very accurate and efficient audio algorithms and also to export them as C++ code. Let's take a look inside the gen help file. So here is a very basic patch. And as you can see, the left and first input of the gen object is used both for audio connections and for events connections, so messages. Let's take a look inside the object. So you can see already some differences between uh, this patching environment and the traditional Max one. Basically here, every object is running at audio rate. So we don't use the tilde as a symbol after the name of each object because there's no difference between events and signals. Everything is signals inside Gen. But many objects share the same names with the traditional Max environment. Inputs and outputs inside the Gen environment have unique names that we can assign them through the argument. So if we want a secondary input, we will just change the argument here and same for a secondary output and so on. What is happening here is that our input signal is being modulated by a cycle, which is a sinusoidal oscillator, as much as the cycle object in the traditional max environment and here it is used as an LFO since its argument describes a frequency of 2 Hz. Afterwards this is scaled down by a fixed parameter defined by this object param. So param is our way to define variables that we can also access from the outside of the gen object. In this case we named the variable amp and we assign to it a value of 0 0.5. So let's listen to this patch. So this is a pretty simple patch that's modulating a sinusoidal oscillator, but as I said before, the cool thing is that we can access to the amp value that we defined inside the object through the param object, and change it. As you can hear, there are some clicks, because this value is not interpolated and this is a pretty simple patch. We can maybe modify this patch to get to know better how to start patching inside Gen, but before that, we can take a look inside the common operators in the Gen environment, which you can find inside this help file. Standard operators are related to math, logic, ranges and routing. So there are some operators like these sum and difference, which are the same operators inside the max environment. The cool thing is that we can define numbers and constants with the float or the pi, which is already defined inside the gen environment, but also the square root here and even the sample rate and so on. And the cool thing is that since everything is running at audio rate inside Gen, we don't have to send any bang, we are expecting from the outside of these objects to have a continuous signal. So there are also other operators related to functions, uh, trigonometric operators, uh, and uh, sigmoid functions, and so on. And one very interesting thing is this code box object. We can consider the code box as a replacement for the traditional block diagram patching, which we are used to inside Max. So basically, we can define functions inside this code box uh, by using its pseudocode, which it's comparable to a simplified version of C++ or JavaScript or Python, because it implements also some basic algorithms and data structures which we can use with coding languages, for loops, while loops, if then else, and so on. How to get to know the code box? We will have a lesson specifically for this purpose, but we can get started with it by checking what happens 
inside the coding tab in the gem patcher. So as you see here, there's this tab called code, and uh, we can see an equivalent writing of our patch here, but done with the code box syntax. This is the way you can maybe start patching inside the gem patch and later check what's the equivalent in the code box syntax and then maybe clean up your patch by writing everything in a refined and neat code box version of your patch. So here we have logic operators and here there are ranges and routing objects. So this is a pretty much more complex patch than the one we've been seeing before. But basically, you can see what's going on here with this clip, wrap, fold, and scale object. They all work similarly by letting you set a lower and an upper limit, which you can use to scale or fold or wrap or clip your input values. Then a selector, same as the selector tilde object in the max environment. And then here's some alternative selectors, which can also interpolate between your input values. Mix especially is used for filters because it lets you have a linear crossfade between two inputs. We will get there. And here on the right side, you can see the equivalent behavior of your block diagram patch, but with the code box syntax. Then there are operators, specifically made for the gen environment, accumulators and filters, utilities and conversions, waveforms even, although these ones in particular, beside the sinusoidal one, are generated by computation, so they do not work great for synthesis purposes because there isn't any anti-aliasing filter. Then feedback and delays, which we will be checking uh, inside the next lesson. These are the operators used for feedback, delays, and so on. History, which is a one sample delay. And then the delay operator itself. So we will later be checking all these other functions that are included inside this help file, included the export one, which is the one that let us export the C++ code from the gen patch. But let's just do a very simple first step, which can be modifying this gen patcher by adding some functions. So we copy everything here. Actually, we don't need the comments, so let's do this. Yes. There you go. So we can see what happens if we bring this nth value outside the common digital depth range. As you can see, we are clipping now. I'm just managing the output value with this gain, but what happens is that, as you can see from the scope, we are out of the maximum range of the digital domain. So, to avoid such a thing, we can uh, open the gem patch and set the lower and upper limit of our amp param. By doing so, param amp 0 0.5 is uh, our initial value, and then we can set the minimum and maximum values so this parameter doesn't exceed the, the range between 0 and 1. How can we learn how to use all these modules and get to know their attributes, like in this case, by clicking their help file. So it's usually alt plus uh, click. And then you have everything you need, pretty much. The cycle here is described as an interpolating oscillator, same as cycle tilde. Input. Multiplier. And so on. So, as you can see now, even though I'm sending a value which is much higher than 1, nothing is happening because since I am exceeding the upper limit, this value is not sent. Everything is clipped between 0 and 1. So even values which are lower than 0, they are not considered at all. 
And yet, as soon as I start moving again, this float number connected to the amp value, we can hear some clicks. So how to remove these clicks? The easiest way is to use an interpolator. So slide, similar to the slide till the object, it filters a signal logarithmically, and it has two arguments which are slide up value in samples and slide down value in samples. So we will put a slide here. I assume we can maybe exaggerate and go with 50 samples, which are slightly higher than one millisecond. If we are using a 48 kilohertz uh, sampling rate, there we go. Now we turn the patch on again. I still hear some clicks. So maybe let's use higher values. So approximately 10 milliseconds. As you can see now, I can go very fast, but clicks are being substantially removed from here. So this was just an easy introduction to the gen environment. You can download this patch by following the link below this video and then get ready for the next video, which will be about using delay lines inside gen. Thank you for following this first lesson. I will see you later.